Hey guys, Sharpen here. In this video we're going to remake the drop scene from Sobe by Galdive. Here's the original. And here's what we're going to be making today. So the cool thing about the sounds that we're going to recreate today is that they're fairly simple but what makes them so smooth and cool is actually just how they're being programmed. So let's take a quick listen. So as you can hear it sounds sort of like sine waves um, but when they're being programmed they're also using pitch bending uh, to reach the notes that they want to reach. So let's take a look at this MIDI arrangement that I've made. Um, so as you can see, it, usu it usually features like three note or two note chords that are being pitch bended downwards. Um, and in all of the pitch bending, it, it usually just is five semitones below the original note. So let's hear it. And in order to make that, you basically want to find the chord that you want. Like in this case, it's just A minor, A, C, and E. And in order to make it happen, I'm just uh, taking notes five semitones above, which are D, F, and A, and then pitch bending them downwards by five semitones to get to the chord that I really want to play. So same thing happens here. We have E going down to B and C going down to G. And you can notice that in this part, we don't have any pitch bending, um, just to add some variation, I suppose. Um, so let's take a look at how I did this thing in Serum. So in order to emulate the pitch bending, I just changed it from minus two to minus five so that when I pitch bend it down, we get to the notes that we want to achieve. And now let's start by looking at the main synth. So we have a sine wave and we have one LFO that is modulating its fine tuning by a tiny bit. Um, as you can see, the BPM setting is off, it's at 9 Hz, so basically it adds a nice vibrato effect. And then we have a low pass filter that has a lot of drive, a lot of fat, and a lot of resonance. And as you can see, it opens up on a quarter note, just by quite a bit here. And thanks to the drive and the resonance, it adds some nice additional harmonics to our uh, sine wave. And then effects wise we have um, distortion on the downsample function, so basically it's just like bit crushing. If you listen closely to the original you can hear some very slight bit crushing, so that's why I've added just a tiny amount with low drive and very low mix. It helps the sound pop in the mix a bit more because now it has some high end. And then some chorus to make it sound uh, more stereo, um, also in the original it sounds very wide, so some chorus can go a long way. Um, other than that, I've added an OTT basically to boost up uh, some of the highs and the mids uh, since just the sine wave has, well, mostly lows in this case. And then some compression. Uh, I'm just using it to um, make each chord hit sound very similar in volume. And then I'm um, high passing at 100 Hz, just remove some sub notes that we don't need because we have a separate bass. So let's hear it without these effects. So as you can see, it works, but it doesn't sound really full. And once you add OTT, you can hear uh, the high end ring a bit more, uh, the mids become more pronounced, and then once you compress it by quite a lot. You get a sound that's way more even, it doesn't have very loud and quiet moments. And the EQ just helps us fit it with our bass. So that's it for this sound. Uh, as you can see here, I'm also reducing the amount of stereo separation. I'm basically making it sound a bit more mono compared to this. If you use headphones, you'll hear the difference. I just want it to be more centered and more uh, in the front because this is our main synth sound. And then we have this tiny wah synth that happens here. It's sort of there to add some variation. So let's take a look. We have a saw wave and I'm using an LFO to modulate its volume from zero to all the way up. 
and to uh, open up a low pass filter. So this low pass filter is fairly low on the cutoff and it has a lot of resonance to create this sort of wah effect. So as you can hear, the more we the more we add resonance, we get some more additional frequencies, doing sort of like a Y effect. And here I'm using it on envelope mode, and I'm removing the BPM setting to just find the sweet spot. For me, it was 4.5 hertz. But you can find something that works for you. And as you can see, the shape opens up really fast and then closes uh, really fast as well to get sort of like a very sharp and transient and sort of transient -y sound and as for effects um, we have some hyper to add some more uh, voices and also some dimension expanding to give it a sense of uh, it being uh, played in a room again some uh, big crushing and some chorus as well so this is it for the second sound and one thing I suggest is that um, when you play this sound, at least in the original song, they sort of shifted it slightly um, backwards to add some swing to it. So you can do just that. And once you add drums, you can probably hear the difference with uh, the swing or without it. And then for our bass. So our bass is really, really simple. Let's remove the effect and start from scratch. So it's just a saw wave and basically we have a low pass filter, uh, pretty low and really that, that's all there is for the serum patch. And then I've added a bunch of effects to make it sound really cool. So basically I've added um, two distortion plugins here in effect track. Uh, they're here to reduce some of the highs of the sound and make it sound a bit more uh, full bodied so they introduce some highs, but overall they add a lot of necessary uh, mids to the space. And then we have some camera crusher. It's on the British Clean preset, which uh, barely adds any distortion. It just adds some nice slight saturation. And then we've an EQ and I'm removing, um, I'm reducing a lot of the highs and the mids to make it sound a bit more uh, subby and a bit more in the back. And then together with the main uh, sine wave patch, you get something like this. So as you can hear, it's hard hitting, but it doesn't take over the sine wave um, because we're moving uh, a lot of the mids and a lot of the highs as well. We're just keeping it on the sub area and a bit of low mids and bass here. And all together with the wah, you get this thing. Notice that I'm routing the main sign and the bass to another mix track. I'm basically doing that so I can do a volume automation uh, to emulate the kick sidechain in the original. So every time a kick hits, I'm uh, lowering the volume to zero and bringing it back up really fast. And the smart thing about the original is that the kick hits only when you have uh, the main synth play. So notice how we have a kick here, here, here and here. Every time we have a chord, we have a kick. So this really brings a lot of movement, accentuates the entire um, synth and bass thing going on. So altogether you get a really hard hitting um, sound without trying too hard. And that's pretty much it. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what subject do you want me to cover up next time.